But in the process of researching that, I think I accidentally solved everything. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. And welcome to GT Not Live, where today we're doing what we always do on GT Not Live, theorizing and FNAF. I mean, honestly, like, if there, was, if there was truly a list that existed of all the criteria of what makes a GT Live episode, this is checking off at least a subset of those. Absolutely, and it seems to be every time I'm here. <laughs> that is funny how that works. When you come, FNAF comes with you. It's true. It's the, true. the FNAF boys are, it, are back in town. Oh, the FNAF boys are... Boys are back in town! Boys are back in town! I can't sing any more than that because then it'll get copyright flagged. Woo! <laughs> I, I did... Now that we're up in the attic, though, we did have to move where the FNAF, FNAF board is. Mm. Now it, it moves more. It, we'll find a place on the wall. Absolutely. You can pick out a place. On, we could put it over there on that wall. If we you could. If you want it. I'd, I'd be game for that. Where, what wall would you like? Oh, no. To You're dominate. Picking, when to dominate your single wall. Dominate. <laughs> and to be fair, when I say the FNAF board, like, there's no world where it's big enough to contain all the information that it needs. No, it needs resetting every video we do. <laughs> every single video that we do, we reset the FNAF board mm -hmm. pretty much all, all the time. And, which might, maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe, maybe that's our issue. Maybe that's the problem. No. We need multiple FNAF boards. No, no, we certainly need multiple. Maybe there's like, if we break down how many theories, like threads we have, we break down each other. It's like, this is the purple guy's phone guy timeline. There you go. This is the William Afton doesn't exist in the book timeline. This is the books are canon to the game's board. And like, we have like literally boards all over this room. It'll be terrible for the sound. Absolutely oh, awful. Man. Reflect it for days, but it'll be great for the lore. It'll be, up, it'll be like our Sistine Chapel. Yeah, I was going to say Michelangelo there. on the ceiling. In like, the beginning, there was Henry. <laughs> except if you go to that wall in which Henry does not exist as a character. And we're just sitting there going, which one was that again? Um, uh, I think it was that one. <laughs> this is the one where, where Toy Chica is actually the, the, the mimic. The mimic. The key character to it all. <laughs> Toy Chica. Yeah. Toy Chica. Yandere Chica. Solving Toy everything. Toy Chica unlocks everything. Ash, you look so con you're looking over here so concerned. I, that's going to make this such an unsafe space. That's what, a dangerous space. What, boards hanging from the ceiling? Ment I'm, mentally or physically? I, both. <laughs> Surround is, is that not how you've pictured your life? Surrounded on all sides by animatronic murder lore? Because honestly... That's how I see my life. That, that I, is my life at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's what life is becoming. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I can't push back. <laughs> you know, it, Halloween season is, is coming up. It is, uh, it is spoopy season. Where is. is that FNAF attraction? Like, we need that, like, <laughs> the FNAF attraction for spooky season. Oh, I, I, isn't there one on Universal Studios right now? They're doing, like, oh, an animation of the movie. There's, Ooh. like, a, just... Oh, cool. it's, it's not, like, a you know, walk through the pizzeria, and, but sure. it's like, hey, here are the animatronics from the movie. It's like, oh. we're hyping things up, like behind the scenes thing. If they don't come to life, what's the point? Th that's what I They just say. stood there. But I do like this idea of, because I will say, Five Nights at Freddy's uh, has some great merch thanks to us. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, Scott. Uh, this is coming soon, I, I think, based on when this video is being uploaded. So it, I believe it's coming soon. Coming soon, or is available now, it's, it's or, is, or is done. Yeah, or, or it's been over, <laughs> but depending on what in the timeline you're watching it. So sorry you missed the boat on that one. But their costumes aren't great. I was at, uh, I was at uh, Spirit Halloween over the weekend with Ali, mm. and there was a great Huggy Wuggy costume. Great Huggy oh. Wuggy costume. Not so great, uh, not so great FNAF stuff in general. That's a shame. But I think that we can fix it, right? Okay. What if we create a costume that is surrounded by lore and we just put a bunch of books in a cage, like we w basically wear a cage around yourself mm -hmm. and you line the cage with the different FNAF books and then that's you dressing as me or Tom <laughs> trapped in FNAF lore. You are walking, talking, Engaged in the lore. That is it. I think that's it. Someone contact Spirit Halloween. Ash is unimpressed by this. You don't it's, like this? I, it's not that I'm unimpressed. I'm just. It's too real. I'm depressed. <laughs> 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 
That's merch right there. I'm not Slap that on it. I would wear that one. I'm not impressed. I'm, I'm depressed. depressed. <laughs> <laughs> that is. That is. That we, is we, need, we need a sign. That is merch <laughs> we waiting to happen right there. We're, we're gonna throw that into the next law. After we sell, you know, reversible animatronic spring trap. We're going to definitely sell. I'm depressed. That's I'm not impressed. I am depressed. So anyway, uh, in, in our ever, if our ever ending, no, in our never ending quest to line the walls of every surface in my life with FNAF lore, as we've talked about, there is a lot of minutia to solve here, right? Yeah. Obviously, you have the big stuff. Like, hey, did William Afton ever exist in the world outside of the games? Uh, but also, you have other minutia, such as like, hey, the Vanny Mask, WTF. <laughs> like, what the heck is up with this thing? What is this thing? Like, Why is it here? <laughs> yeah, within any given game at this point, there are so many sub-mysteries to solve. Mm. You know, like, I'm still befuddled by the... F I, I called this out in a previous GT Live, but, like, the whole wall tally code, mm. that that is a huge thing that's now two games in, and no one has touched it. Like... A couple people, and, and you on the subreddit after I brought it up, you've done a, a game job on, on proposing some potential solutions. Kudos to you. We still haven't solved it, but I love some of the ideas that have been coming out mm. of that. But, you know, there's the tangle. There's the wall codes. There's, you know, is burn trap still the mimic? Like, there's so many sub-questions in any given game installment or, you know, even down to, like, are the books part of the game? Like, yeah. there's so much. There's so much. And, and I think... One of the great things, that's one of the good and bad things about it, right, is is in solving any one component, you're missing out on all these others. So you've got to keep an eye on the small things, but also the big things, all of that stuff. So in the wake of Ruin coming out, I've seen a, a lot of you suggesting to me, and I've been recommended on YouTube, a lot of smaller and mid-tier creators mm. who are solving and tackling a lot of those things. So like at this point, you've got us, right? You've got the Rytos of the world, the FNAFs, Idens Fantasy, like a lot of people who are, who we featured on past live streams, we're all getting recommended against each yeah. other, things like that, who are solving all sorts of different components of the lore. But I've seen a lot of other channels being recommended that are taking on different components, right? One that was recommended to me literally a day or two ago was, how much money does Fazbear Entertainment make? Which I think is a fantastic question it's for a great. business that has gone out of business multiple times. I know uh, Rye Toast beat me to one, which was how to how many OSHA violations? Oh, for Bam Bam, that wasn't. Oh, that was for Bam Bam. That was for Bam Bam. They haven't yeah. done for FNAF. So, huh? No, there we go. Uh, <laughs> you, OSHA violations. You feel like reading some, uh, reading up on some American business code? Oh, I bet it's great. As someone who's <laughs> done one of those episodes before for Willy Wonka, oh, it yeah. is dry. <laughs> dry. It is so dry, but oh, makes a great episode. It 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 would be. Yes, I'm sure. I, I, I see. His, he's starting to match the color of his shirt. Because he's like, oh, this is my future. This is what I have. I'm seeing my future flash before you know, my you eyes. You have two options, Tom. <laughs> I, let, me, let me put it this way, Tom. I, I, love I love Tom. Let me put it this way, Tom. You have two options. Yep. One, read through a bunch of OSHA code. Yep. And figure out how many OSHA violations happen in this business. Yep. You know, dry. Very dry. But. But you can do it. Or your alternative, come up with a FNAF theory that people aren't going to immediately hate. I'll take the OSHA violations. There you go! <laughs> there it is. That's... See? See? Uh, but no, so... Uh, in, and one of the ones that... that so maybe one day we'll react to that, because I think... I, I haven't gotten a chance to watch this one about how much money uh, uh, Fazbear Entertainment has. I think it's a really interesting question. I'd love to see what conclusions they're reaching, because as a person who has studied and worked with a lot of other businesses and has their own business like i think we mm. bring a lot of knowledge to the table steph i'd have to call on steph for that one because yeah. you'd be able to like manage through a lot of that too i'm curious um but uh this one uh that we're reacting to today uh i think tackles another really interesting subset of this question right so this one is from the chip tide uh 14, subscribers uh how does the vanny mask work so i hadn't seen the chip tide prior to this i actually have not watched this video but from a couple minutes of looking across the channel do you like video games yes how about math science and engineering we're in yes absolutely so how about both with a strong focus on comedy oh if the dad jokes be a plenty like this is Instant subscribe I'm in. right here. I am in. If you answered yes to at least one of those questions, then oh, come on in. See, inclusivity. I like that. I you don't it. have to like it all. Right? Just I mean, like this one of those bits. And look at this. Like, what is the strongest possible fusion? This feels like an absolute banger of a game theory episode. Why don't they close the doors? Why don't they stay closed? Love that. 
This is great. All oh, in your head, this right. is the one that we're reacting to. It's statistically strongest type combo. Can we, this, I have not watched his videos yet, no. but I'm already very excited to like, be great. like, please, come on to the team. Please, you, you must join, join us. us. Help join. us. <laughs> one of us. One <laughs> of us. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. All in your head. So how would you explain the Van Mass work? So this one was recommended by a lot of people over on the mm. Game Theory subreddit, which if you are not over there, be over there. We crossed 800,000 uh, followers over on the subreddit, which is awesome. And I'm excited about this. Your recommendations tend to be really solid. So this apparently has solved a, a chunk of this. And who knows? Maybe this will solve the whole thing. So this is what we're reacting to today, Tom. This would be great. Like, it's a mask that makes no sense in terms of well, AR and VR and... Well, right. That, well, and that's what it is, right? It is simultaneous. And, and before we hop in mm. and see what his conclusions are, I'd love to... We should probably do a quick assessment, right? Yes. Because... On one hand, and we'll react to it in, in live too, but mm. on one hand, it's one of those things where it is a virtual augmented neural network mask, right? Yes. So it's a VR headset to some extent. Yes. But more realistically, in the game at least, it seems like it functions. So there is a difference between VR and AR, which VR, you're in a virtual world, right? Like I am seeing a screen mm -hmm. and I'm dropped into that world. AR is I'm projecting digital assets into a world around me. I'm still in into my real, real world. world. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So if I'm seeing like a computer screen on this wall or I'm seeing like a poster that isn't there over there. Mm. And based on the way the game plays, you have more AI components, it feels. Like there's more AI layering into the world around you. Yes, but then at the same time, the weird thing is what you say, AR is like, it adds things to the real world but then it removes things. So there's a, there's a real blockage yeah. and you put on the mask and in the AR world, you can walk through that thing suddenly. So it's removing yeah. real things, which right. is where it gets confusing. Yeah, it, it seems like that object, I should only be able to see that object when the mask is on, mm. right? Because I'm seeing it through the AR lens. And so that physical box that I can't pass through shouldn't actually be there until I see it, right? Yes. Which is where potentially the implant comes in because mm. because that's the other weird thing about this and again we should probably react to this in real time yeah. and then we can talk through in real time but as we get started and i we haven't sat down and, and truly thought through a lot of the ramifications of this but that idea of the occipital implant that they tell you at the beginning mm. like oh we just implanted something to your brain so that help we can still talk to you that's the that's the thing isn't it it's trying to it from a game perspective it's going hey, here's how we can get the tutorial bot to be with you forever. Right, it, but, yeah. but <laughs> you can't just do that with FNAF. <laughs> right, and so it's like, well, is that just so help you can talk to me? Or is this yet another, like, is the mask now arbitrary to this entire process? Yeah. Because if something's implanted in my brain and it's sending my brain, you know, signals and chemicals and whatever. But now, yeah, then also it becomes that thing of, is it making the blockages appear in, real, in the real world yeah. so that when you put on the mask, you're seeing the true yep. path. Yeah, and, and it, it, right. And occipital lobe is back, which is responsible for visual perception, mm. color, form, motion. Yeah, it's, it's one of these like core ones in the back. So cerebellum is, is the one for movement and reaction. Occipital mm. lobe is ox for eyes and visual. So yeah, but you know, it's, it's again, one of those base senses. So having an implant in the, in the part of your brain where you see things it's going to affect how you see it's gonna, things. It's going to, it would presu could presumably affect mm. how you're seeing things, right? So I am curious to see how he finds all this. I think part of me was just getting to the point of like, game be gaming. And so that's Gotta why. have a cool mechanic kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, which it is a cool mechanic. So I, I'm curious. And, and here's the thing, right? Like, I have a feeling there's also potentially a world where we are able to create a, an explanation for this. But I'm curious to see what the chip tide has mm. to say about that. All right, let's roll into it, shall we? Let's. How does the Vanny mask work? FNAF Rune explained. Here we go. Yes, someone please explain it to Ready us. Ready to solve it all. Is it? You know, no, he, no he's, just, he's just solving the Vanny mask. Which will inevitably thing. solve it all. No, yeah. <laughs> Willing to bet that most people had a pretty similar experience playing the new Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach Ruin DLC last week. Oh, Gregory is trapped in the pizza plex? Yeah, right. You know what? I bet this is that mimic character from the books, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. That is accurate. That is exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Gregory's been acting super shifty this whole time. He is definitely an AI. I also, I have this mask. Th technically, he's not. Okay, let, let, let's call this. I, I know this is for comedic effect. <laughs> let's be clear. He is not. Well, technically, the mimic is the AI. But, but, but the mimic okay. might be an AI, but there also might be a physical mimic. There, there's, also, there's multiple AIs working. 
I get your point though. Let's not be reductive, okay? I understand the, the Res- price of comedy. Respect the lore. We got it. And got that's it. me phase through solid objects. That's pretty weird, but you know what? I think for the most Accurate. part, I am finally understanding a FNAF game for once. Oh, oh my friend. See, <laughs> this is, so this is, I mean, it's accurate. It's not wrong. What the f- Now you are- On, uh, on one hand, I agree. ruin, I mean, ruin, it, 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 that, that dramatic arc is entirely accurate, because it was. Is, yeah. It was, it was like, oh, I understand this, I understand. Like, oh, we proved this, we predicted this, this is a thing, we know where this is going. And then all of a sudden, the credits were, you're like, oh. That was the ending? Hold on. <laughs> Shoot. What the heck? Yeah. The, and, Ruin was interesting because it, on the surface, it made sense. Mm. And then the more you looked at it, you're like, wait, but hold on. Yeah. Maybe not. It was so almost, much. almost, I was going to say almost the opposite of Security Breach, where yeah. at first we looked at it going, what? Yeah. And then as we went on, we are going, okay, I think we're piecing together pieces. And then it's like, Ruin's going to solve it all. And then it just did the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> they are. They're on, tra- they're on opposite trajectories. It's great. They, they self-corrected too hard. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, me. Normally, I don't like touching FNAF lore with a 29 and a half foot pole. But instead, I usually like to look into the it's a reference, Tom. Is it? Ash. This man. This man. This man. This man. This man. You don't know what he's referencing? I'm not sure I do. If it, if it is, it's lodged in the back of my brain behind all the FNAF books. Well, we got to get you reading more books then. Oh, no. It's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Let us know down in the comments below. Do you know more than Tom about this reference? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Tom's been doing a great job so with his own personal cultural edification. You've gone so to see a lot of movies. I've seen a lot of movies. Books are You've the read ne- a lot of books. You're getting bo- there. Books are my white whale. I've never been good at reading. Yeah. FNAF books are the only books I've read in the last decade of my life. Yeah, well, we'll get you there. Don't worry. I know. We're getting you there. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're doing great. Thank You're you. You're doing great. You went to see Pillow Man the other day. I was very proud of that. That was, yep, that it was, was an experience. It was, <laughs> it was. That was, a, that was throwing you into the deep end. You Let's put this man through a lot. I did, he voluntarily went to Pillow Man. That was not my fault. <laughs> Between that's, FNAF lore and Pillow Man? Not that's, my trauma. Trauma. That's, that's trauma. That's trauma. He, oh, he, he walked into that job. <laughs> right, right. Okay, fair. Pillow Man was just, that was Jason's. That's a hashtag blame. I will, I will be honest. It did take me about a month to suddenly clock on. So I took this job going, oh, wait, I have to do FNAF. <laughs> so suddenly it took me. For like, those of you who don't know, Pillow Man is a play. It is a very, a good play. It is a very incredibly dark play unbelievably dark. It is so depressing and sad and scary. Yeah. Right, Ad? I mean, you're at the theater, you know. Yeah. We yeah. had um, we had a student group do it my first year of undergrad. Oof. And my thought was, that's bold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's also, it's also Jason's favorite play. And so mm-hmm. we collectively went around the office and said things that like, hey, Tom and the other creative director should see and just be culturally aware of. Like, hey, let's all feed into each other's like creativity mm-hmm. and like pop culture references yeah and jason's contribution was built oh my god <laughs> and so that it was playing i have on many questions for yeah, him. It, was, <laughs> it was playing on the west end when we were over in london and so we all collectively saw it and i knew what i was getting into none of us did <laughs> <laughs> no! like i saw the post and went i can see this is probably going to be dark and then there's dark <laughs> then there's pillow man it's, it's, it's rough it's, it's a rough ride and then I like that Amy's contribution was Devil Wears Prada great movie <laughs> which, is, that was solid. which is becoming a musical on the West End yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so, becoming a musical I'm excited about it okay hey how about the Vanny mask though talking no, no. about this Vanny mask I'm very excited about this okay, uh, engineering and science behind everything wait a minute I didn't even realize his his thumbnails use real <laughs> fairy oh, green. I see, hold, I see you. I see what you're doing there. God. So my is he even using for- Gotham Ultra? That is, I think that is Gotham Ultra right there. <laughs> Brand confusion. Today's video was to try and explain the Vanny mask and how it Great. lets you walk through solid walls. Great question. But in the process of researching that, I think I accidentally solved. Every question. Oh, no! I called it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Believe, Matthew! Believe! That's incredible! 
<laughs> so just how stuff goes. Oh, oh and it is. It, it feels like it's mandatory at this point. I saw everyone. one detail, <laughs> and now everything makes sense. It is. It's mandatory. Every FNAF video has to be. I solved this one thing, which solves everything. Good oh, on no. you, sir. Good on you. Oh, what have we done? <laughs> oh, what have we done? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what horror have we wrought upon the world? Oh. Hit that intro. <gasps> All the references! And there's a slow poke! <laughs> just very excited by this. I love, po I love Pokemon. Ash is dying about hit dead intro. That's but... my thing! <laughs> that is, used my thing! That is, so, uh, we've talked about this briefly in passing in past GT Not Lives, but every time before we start rolling, we make a dat intro joke. Like, roll dat intro! But, you know, one thing I can't live without. Dad, Dad intro. intro. Oh yeah, no, totally. So the fact that he just did it. This oh. is my favorite video already. <laughs> this I love this. Is, this is my favorite. Oh, oh statistically tastiest Pokemon. Secretly ripped. I mean. <laughs> oh, oh great. Fraud. I wait, I love point now. I love the fraud. Fra Ar Ar Arceus yeah. the fraud. Arceus, the god Pokemon. Fraud! False prophet. Not a god. Wait, let oh, me- Wait, they did an episode. He did an episode? Fart equals jet fuel on Wario? <gasps> oh. oh man, we, we've done an episode about Wario's farts too. We did. What? Oh man. Oh wow. All right, before we get into this okay. mask, I'm gonna try this my- has been a, This has been a wild ride so far. <laughs> we are we are a minute 30 in. It's been, it, there's been no FNAF talk, but it's no. been a wild ride regardless. This is fantastic. We, we are feeling a lot of things right now. <laughs> You've gotten all three of us. <laughs> Me through the FNAF solved, Ash through the intro, Tom apparently through Slowpoke. I <laughs> don't really understand that one. Man, when your life is FNAF, you have to like find joy in the little things and Pokemon are those little Slow things. Slowpoke is that for you. So, just, he has no thoughts, only vibes. Okay. Look at those eyes. No <laughs> thoughts, those only eyes. vibes. <laughs> Send all your favorite slow pokes to Tom for his for his vibes, please. please. I okay. Just to <laughs> recap everything that happens in this DLC. Okay, uh -oh. we, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for chapter markers. We know what happened in this DLC. Yes, and then no, okay. goes into a cave. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no. We are Skip. a little bit. The game familiar. just ends. What? Great. <laughs> all right. So I know you probably have. A lot of questions after that, but let's put all those fake Gregories and complete lack of any cathartic ending aside and focus okay. on the Vanny mask. Yes, right Vanny mouse. stands for Virtual Augmented Neural Network yes, we were Integration. About this. Yes. Uh -huh. At first, this sounds like just a whole bunch of techno mumbo jumbo that some writer spent no, like 30 stuff. minutes coming up with just to have an acronym that matches the name of the antagonist from the first game. I mean, but I mean, let's that, go. That is also it. That is also true. It is, it is impressive though that they came up with something that is close. Like it has meaning. Like yeah. I'm, I'm actually impressed that they sometimes I, I feel like with FNAF they don't plan out things and then they look their way into stuff like this where they're like, oh, if we. Well, how can we make this one work? Well, especially as we know they have a habit of mixing up virtual and augmented. So yeah. they've just gone, we're going to put them both in and no one can accuse us of getting it wrong. The, the thing that Tom's <laughs> referencing here is there's been, there's been a couple stories in the books uh -huh. where they use virtual reality and augmented reality very interchangeably. Yeah, and you're, Tiger Rock was particularly bad. For yeah, it. Tiger Rock for being the title story and being this like <clears throat> important one for overall like lore stuff seems sloppy like yeah it, like in terms of the way it uses the technological words yeah i because at first because you read it before me yeah and when you read it you said that and i'm like there's no way like maybe tom's just misreading but no then i read it, i'm like oh no they're absolutely right like it's it's it, great yeah if they keep flip-flopping so this solves the problem yeah exactly it's well, both have them. both <laughs> yeah. i will take them all please <laughs> all the lore thank you through those terms one by one, one lore, to please. figure out what this actually means okay Virtual and augmented are both pretty clear references to virtual reality and yes. augmented reality. Agreed. Now, technically speaking, VR and AR are not the same thing. You it. Virtual it's reality you is it. a completely simulated reality where nothing See, you're seeing is real, like with mm. VR games like Beat Saber. And AR I love that. is when I something- love, Can I just say- I thought about Beat Saber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that from now until the end of time. Virtual reality will just be Beat Saber. Like, that's it. That is that the was thing. The, yeah, that was the one that everyone's like, 
Beat Sa the killer app for VR, Beat yeah. Saber. I'm trying to think of what other games there were that I can point to. <laughs> it's like you had FNAF VR, you had Portal, but no, Beat Saber. No, I mean, like, Beat Saber, right? Beat Saber tried to save the VR industry, and it wasn't enough. <laughs> no, if Beat Saber couldn't handle it, nothing could. No, and, and to be fair, like, there's, a, there's a, a handful of really good ones. Like, obviously, Beat Saber's the one that everyone always calls out, but, like, you, you Help One, I thought was actually a really oh, solid usage of it. Um, a lot of good horror experiences in there. Mm. Uh, not to be outdone, though, uh, Boneworks, Bone Lab. Oh, uh, yeah. Solid. Um, I haven't played Bone Works. We played Bone Lab. We played the first one, Bone which was Bone Lab, Bone and then Bone Works was the second one, right? I think. Which we've always been meaning to do, but now, <clears throat> maybe now that we're in this new bigger space, we can reset it up. Yes, we'll That'd need to configure all the VR stuff, but I know. we it's, needed it's a, a we needed a better machine. We did, and also a better console. We need a VR console, Matt. That's a, that's the problem with VR. That's why everyone only en ends up playing Beat Saber. Because well, everyone's like, I ain't doing this. Because our old console, it was like, we've merged it with a Facebook account that you cannot oh, access oh, anymore. I know. It's, yeah, the whole meta can... Anyway, yeah. virtual reality on virtual reality. placed in the real world, yes. like that one feature in Pokemon Go that you immediately yeah. turned off. The one that's like, Either way, though, day. the <laughs> gist is I, honestly, that this yeah. mask shows you things that aren't real. A neural network is a subset of machine learning, yeah. or in buzzword terms, AI. Yeah. So, that's, the that's Vanny true. is an AR slash VR headset that integrates you into the neural network of this AI called the Mimic. That is this is yes, how this is Helpy was able to replicate Cassie's voice, and how Gregory can comment on things that Helpy says throughout the game. It's because they're both part of the Mimic neural network. All right. Yes. Yeah. I think that I feel like that's pretty clear. We don't. I don't think we need to comment on that. Like I, I think no, he follows. I think he actually did a really good job of explaining that. <clears throat> it's it's a pretty nuanced topic, but I thought that was well done. Good job. Right. So the Vanny Mask is a fancy VR headset that allows an AI to copy your voice and make you sing Frank Sinatra with Plankton. Cool. But that's still that feels yes! like a deep, that feels like a deep <laughs> cut that I am not getting. <laughs> Is this another, Bob? Is yeah. this another book thing? No, <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is, <laughs> this is a SpongeBob thing. Yep. Do you know SpongeBob? Uh, yes, from many, many year, year, years ago at this point. Many, many years. Many, many years. No, no, all those years. <laughs> year ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just didn't expect to see a SpongeBob dropped into my. No, my into my FNAF. FNAF. No, yeah. it's not well, y'all have seen all the Plankton AI singing things, right? Yes. I have. No, that's the thing. That's where I'm clearly missing a connection tissue here. Is that he's, bit? He's very good at Frank Sinatra. I've, I've seen the YouTubers singing very AI singing various things, like Matt singing about tacos. What? There's an AI Matt that sings about how There's he does tacos. Matt that sings, sings about is it? Tacos. Is it like it's raining tacos? It is raining. Tacos. No, it's raining tacos. Matt sings it's raining tacos. Can you send me the link? I will find that for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And, and then you can return with sending send me, me, send me some send me plankton singing Sinatra. Yeah, I think that's a fair trade. Great. Great. <laughs> Who doesn't explain, you know, the whole phasing through solid objects thing? That In is. the games, there are certain points where like a box is blocking your path. But if you put on the mask, you realize that the box isn't real and you can walk right through. Right, which it should be the But reverse, if it's really a VR headset, then Surely it should be the other way around. Uh -huh. right? ah, when see? you're wearing the mask, you see boxes and stuff blocking your path. Correct. But when you take you it, think it off, yes. you realize that it's all just virtual. None of it is real. I mean, that's how AR works. My first thought was, I don't know, dude, it's a video game. <laughs> Magic or something? We all been there, friend. <laughs> I, I, and, to be, and to be fair, right? Like, that's, that's, again, one of the tricks with theorizing about any video game, but especially this franchise, where where the cutoff between intentional decision and just, like, gameplay mechanic is, yeah. is a lot of times unclear, right? And the idea of, like, well, why didn't so-and-so just not accept the job? Or, why, like, a lot of times I see fans asking questions about this series that, to me, mm. I'm like, oh, that's... And, and with theories in general, but, like, to me, it's like, well, it's it's a convenience of the gameplay in a lot of cases. Like, yeah, well, like, the classic one is, why did he come back after night one? Right. Like, yeah, that's, that's the classic that's one. That's a great example. Exactly. And where it's, it's like, like, well, because... Because the game has to happen. Right. Like. Yeah, without it, it's just a different security guard every night, and then that's weird. Weird from a law perspective as yeah. well, and it becomes a whole thing. So you just kind of have to... Ex it's like, you know, suspending your disbelief of kind of going, okay, we have to just... Right. Accept that that's a thing, mm -hmm. and then we'll focus on the things that matter. Right. Within exactly. that. Yeah. Why do you keep coming back? Well, because. And I think, <laughs> re and again, I think retroactively, Mike 
Schmidt being Mike Afton and having a lore-based reason. Like, it makes sense. But in the first game, no. It was just, like, a convenience. Exactly. It was, like, let's be honest with ourselves. Like, that whole plot line wasn't planned out. It's still unclear whether or not it's planned out, you know, and that's still kind of like, is Mike Afton actually Mike Schmidt? That's still the theory, but it's one of those things where in that first game, yeah, he just came back because he came back. Like, yeah. you needed, the game needs a security guard to be in that room for the difficulty to ramp up, and so that's it. You yeah, know? exactly. Then, but, but looking a little deeper, I think there is an actual explanation for this. Shortly after putting on the Vanny mask, Helpy implants some occipital transponders into Cassie. More big science words, let's break that one down too. Yes, great. The occipital lobe is the part of the brain that interprets what your eyes see. Yep. So your eyes receive light waves and then your occipital lobe converts that information into colors, depths, basically it can- I like that we did a mini version of this before we started doing this. Like, yeah, we went through these points. This is amazing, <laughs> yeah. His thought process is solid, I like it. Yeah. what we see. A transponder is a device that detects radio signals. So if the Vanny mask huh, I didn't implants... Think about that. That's interesting. Yeah, I forgot the transponder was the That's a good color. used. Right, because I just was thinking transponder as like, oh, it's a receiver. But trans... Uh, yeah, tying it to radio, that's interesting. Okay. I'm pretty so, sure he's taking that then. So my prediction then <laughs> is where he's taking it mm. is sound discs. When I when he when he calls out radio, no, but like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel the triggering. Already. Yep, I'm just. <laughs> but right, like if all of a sudden you're like... implanted with this thing that's a transponder, yeah. and you have you know something in your brain that's affecting the way you perceive the world around you, it is it is basically a new version of the sound illusion. Well, it, it's audio and visual, right? Isn't it? Because then it's occipital, which is the sight part of your brain the yeah, transponder is an audio it's it is it is scott et al <laughs> refusing to let the the sound illusion discs die except now they're trying to figure out new more scientific ways to mix it in absolutely it is. transponders into the occipital lobe then it could at least theoretically use radio waves to huh. alter what you see even when you're it. not mm -hmm. wearing the mask that would suggest that the objects that you can phase through in the game don't actually exist at all. When you have the mask off, the occipital transponders make you think that there's a box or whatever in the game. And maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like I mean, so realistic that oh, it I can't, tricks the I rest can't of do it. I can't. into thinking that the that's box is convenient. real too, so you can't yeah. move through it, I don't know, Matrix style. This is actually very similar to the rightfully despised Sound illusion. Yeah, course, baby! Which call. use sound Good waves call. of specific frequencies to make you see things that aren't really there. Yeah. These occipital transponders. I like that everyone has to disclaim that they're stupid. Yeah, like, everyone says everyone hates these, by the way. Right? I Just so you know, the, the audience, I, I feel like the audience needs to appreciate a lot of times, you viewers, but I mean like audi the audience of this franchise in general has to be aware of like, so you know, there are a lot of hoops that... People online talking about this franchise jump through to make sure that we're not stepping on people's toes. Like, this is one of those where it's a disclaimer, I don't like these things. Or, like, disclaimer, this isn't necessarily, I don't agree with it, but. They exist. But they yeah. exist, <laughs> and apparently they're used, and apparently whatever. No, so this is one of those where I like that you are legally obligated to say that you don't like the Sound Illusion discs anytime you say Sound Illusion Despite discs. Despite the fact that they keep showing up. They do keep showing up. Keep showing up. People <laughs> refuse to acknowledge them, but they are a thing. Yep. Hunters are still very dumb, don't get me wrong, but at least they're trying to justify it, it. Just, just, a, just a little bit more, just a few more science words in there. Yeah. So essentially, the Vanny unit does two things. It implants transponders into your brain to affect what you see, sure. and it gathers information from you that it can integrate into the Mimic AI. Great, yeah. problem solved, video over. <laughs> Except there's still one question that Great. I have. Why though? <laughs> that's, that, was, that was good. That is, isn't that, that just good. the question for FNAF? Why though? 
<laughs> also, can I just call out, since I paused mm. it, because that was actually very funny. That was great. The, the, I'm so stressed out about the deer with these gigantic antlers. It wouldn't be able to lift its head short. No, I, I, I'm very concerned about it the, needs this to deer's shed. neck safety. It needs to shed. It does. <laughs> it, I feel like that's overgrown, my friend, and you need to let it go. <laughs> if we ever, I don't know what avenue we would ever do a theory about that, but I could see myself doing a theory <gasps> on the antlers on this man's head. Wait. Uh, on, the, on that deer's head. Wait, 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 from, oh, no. from Fire Emblem Three Houses. So it's a game theory. <laughs> so that deer, I don't know why it's on a red shirt. Would the but golden deer have neck problems? <laughs> but hey. That's Between dad intro, a Fire Emblem Three Houses like icon showing up, and all of the chaos that's happening on the couch, we're just begging for a collab. Uh, this I, is I, a I match made in kindred, heaven. Ash just found a kindred spirit. Oh, oh, I don't know where he lives, but he's going to be showing up in this office soon. That's, that's, <laughs> what, we've, that's what we've done. Fear that's the, the deer. Done. Fear the deer. Fear the deer. And its neck pain. <laughs> What's the point? If the whole goal of Helpy and the Mask is to trick Cassie into setting the mimic free, how does making her think there's a box in the way unless she wears the mask help with that? And what's the deal with the anomaly? Is that a, a feature of the mask? Helpy sure doesn't seem to like it, but like, is that just more part of the manipulation? Uh, look, I- So, mm. with us and the anomaly, what are we thinking with the anomaly? <laughs> well, no pressure. No pressure. No, well, our, our last theory on it yeah. was mixes, and the anomaly was built by Afton. Right. Um, down the basement to stop the Mimic getting out after he realized the dangers of the Mimic yeah. AI that- Henry had created and he had just kind of picked up yep because he didn't understand it and so it maybe caused some issues for him so that yep. was our where we kind of sat because everything around the mixes down in the basement is old yep so it has to be old mm -hmm. but it, so it's it is weird because it's running within the neural network it's running within like the AI network yeah but it is not the mimic and it is trying to stop the physical mimic but the AI is right, like there's... interfering with it's basically like the AI interfering with the network and the network has the mixes in it and so they're kind of yeah. clashing and mixing yeah, this, in the system. Yeah, this is one of those times where it's like you need to always dial it back to the simple terms, mm. right? Which is, at the end of the day, the anomaly is working against the mimic. Yes. Because it's trying to stop you from deactivating the security nodes. Yes. Basically. And so whatever it is, whatever for you know, whatever all seeing forces are controlling mixes and is on the side of Gregory and, mm. and the anomaly and whatever, like you know that whoever's sided with anomaly is against the mimic and vice versa. Like that's yes. that is number one. And then within mimic, there's that one line where the mimic argues against itself. Mimic yes. Gregory argues against Mimic Helpy. Yes. And that is another kind of like weird division there as yeah, well. Yeah, they are not one in the same. The right. network and the guy in the basement are not the same The thing. guy in the basement. The, guy, yeah, the, the, the thing in the basement. Yeah, the, the, the physical entity in the basement is yeah. different from the one who's talking to you in your head. Yes. Yeah, which is, again, like, just in this franchise, there's a lot of nuance and a lot of technical jargon and a lot of like, well, this and this. And like, things get yeah. layered up and, and crowded very quickly, right? And it becomes very confusing very quickly. So it's, I think sometimes it's easiest and, and it's important to go back and remind yourself, like, but what is this actually saying? It's like, well, here is this glitch bunny and he is actively working against the mimic. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Who is responsible for that? I don't know. Like, that's what you got to solve. But at least you know that is one of the core rivalries. Exactly. And, and it gives you at least a starter. Before you start building theories on theories on theories, it gives mm -hmm. you a, a firm foundation of... I know for a fact that these two entities are against each other. Why, how, etc. That's where you start mm. building from. Yeah. I know the villains in this series aren't known for having super well thought out plans, but like, what was okay, even the goal here? At first, I was just gonna leave that one for the professionals to mull over, but. <laughs> hey, you are! Hey! Hey! You and John. <laughs> <laughs> you and John, man. There it is. There it is. I'm a professional. You are. I, 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 this, this, this is the right here. This is the face of a professional. I like that John was also the like yeah, the two mean. professionals. There they are. <laughs> they we got are. them. You and John. Let's start Great. with the anomaly or MXES. How do, how do you say it? Nexus? Is that how you say it? Nexus? Nexus. No, no. Nexus. Nexus sounds like sounds like a place you'd be order like a burrito or something from. Actually, you know what, Richard? Do you want to order us some Nexus? 
Our first glance seems to <laughs> I'm be... I'm appreciating his gags. <laughs> it was a good gag. The main antagonist for most of the game. Sort of like this game's equivalent to Vanny from the main game. It shows up, the music gets scary, your camera gets fuzzy, so and you gotta take off your yeah. mask to save yourself, He's which like hinders your mobility. Oh, those yeah. game designers well, collect. There are also certain it. points yeah. in the game well, where this thing will yeah, activate jamming up. beacons, which fully prevent you from using the Vanny unit until you've turned them off. However, if you play the game long enough, you'll realize that this antagonist doesn't actually attack you. Right. In mm -hmm. fact, it doesn't really do anything. It, it just kind of looms over you. So what gives? If you beat the game, you discover that the tex Mexis is basically the security system designed to keep the mimic trapped in the basement. So in a twist, this thing is actually the good guy. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but then why is it always popping out and making me Spill my uh, my water in my lap. I what? <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. I swear. <laughs> also, I've, I haven't noticed this before, or I, I have designed noticed designed to it, keep it, the it, mimic trapped in the basement. So, in a twist, this, video this is, thing is actually the good guy. This doesn't mean anything. It's just interesting. The cables that, yeah, that form his body. Like yeah. I, I've I've noticed it before, but it, I'm just noticing it more as I watch some of this footage mm. and take in what he's saying. It's just very reminiscent of the same materials that made the tangle. Yes. You know? <laughs> I hate calling it the tangle. I know. It's, it, it, it's, it get, it's, get, blob. it's getting. It, it throws me off every time. I'm like, what is he talking about? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, the blob. Right, the blob, it's like, right. It's been so established now, they never corrected it. No, <laughs> it's right. now like, well, now. Right. Uh, but then, why is it always popping out and making me? Spill my uh, my water in my lap. I swear, <laughs> I swear it's just water. Richard, Richard, don't you pan down. Richard, Richard, don't Richard's you dare. Well, down, think about Richard it. The only down. two things that this guy does in the whole no, game the are chase you down while you're wearing the mask, right? Or activate beacons that fully prevent you yeah, from, wearing you from wearing the Whether mask. Wearing Whether it's scaring you into taking it off or outright stopping you from putting it on in the first place, yeah. it's pretty clear. This thing doesn't want you wearing that mask. That is an interesting call out, and I hadn't really considered it from that angle. Because it, it's very clear, like, oh, it wants to stop you from doing the mimic, but from Helping opening the mimic, up the mimic. Yeah. But at the end of the day, really, it is stopping you from wearing this mask, which is weird if all of a sudden we're saying, like, hey, William yeah. Afton made mixes, but then also Glitch Trap William Afton is in charge of... Vanny. Vanny. Yeah, no, it's a good point. It's it's because it's a thing because you can only deactivate the security nodes while wearing the mask, which right. is the connection to is trying to. So so it's whether it's putting on the mask in general or whether it's because by putting on the mask you can access the security nodes, and whether you have to whether that's why it's stopping you from wearing the mask because that's the only way to activate the nodes. But your your call out is right in terms of glitch trap and Vanny. But again, it's whether that was also. Mimic and Glitch that's trap like, was, yeah. Glitch trap is mimic and AI, and so again, it's the same thing. Of it's still fighting back against the mimic, mm -hmm. which is in, in, yeah. which is pretending, essentially pretending to be Afton. Yeah, or believing I, it is Afton. Yeah, it forces you to go back and basically like erase yeah. your understanding of the previous games, because instead of yeah. Glitch trap being this re-embodiment of Afton's soul in code form Atta or yeah, attached to what, a yeah, whatever, circuit board or whatever. Yeah, whatever he was, what what we were all kind of working under the assumption of, which was he's Afton reborn in some other way. In fact, it is Afton, but then all these other things in this AI mimic program in which case, then Afton's fighting himself, which kind of is goofy. Like that, yeah. that also feels a little bit goofy. Here, well, let's see, let's see what he says. I'm curious. But why? Well, I think the reason is twofold. First of all, you can only see the security nodes while you're wearing the oh, Vanny mask. Man. Now, initially, this made no sense to me. Like, realistically speaking, what are these things? Are the security nodes hidden in, what, the air? I mean, like, it's a video game franchise with ghost robots, so anything is possible, but I think there is a much more grounded explanation. Maybe the real security nodes are actual physical objects built into the architecture of the building, hidden in the floors and walls and stuff. That's fair. And the big rabbit things that we see are just augmented projections over them to make them easier for Cassie to see. 
that's the. I mean, I think that makes, like yeah, I, that makes sense. I I wasn't. I never really stopped to question that because yeah, I kind of assumed that sort of thing. Because that's why you go to the different security nodes and it's like it's the barrel, it's the whatever. Like it's you the have, toy that's been knocked over, kind of thing. It's, yeah, it's, it's odd. Right, it's it's odd, but it's at the same time, it's yeah, it's a bunch of arbitrary things to keep your system secure. So the idea mm. of it being random object, it's like yeah, I I get th that. So that way, mm. it, you know, it's it's like doing a completely random password for your account. Right, like the more random it is, and the more dispersed it is, the harder it is to break it, and the harder it is to like yeah. open up that security. So yes, you're right. Like oh, it's it's this one entity made up of all these different pieces. But I never really questioned that. Mm. The only way that I can make sense of this stuff, unless like the entire FNAF universe also exists in like the Matrix or something, which <laughs> I mean, at this point green. honestly seems pretty likely. So Nexus Bell is trying to stop you from putting on the mask because if you don't wear the mask, then you can't find the nodes. And if you can't find the nodes, then you can't free the mimic. That makes enough sense to me, but I think there's actually one other reason why Del Nexus doesn't want you putting that thing on. Because funny enough, this actually isn't the first time that we've seen a mask like this. In FNAF VR Help Wanted, we learn that a woman named Vanessa was possessed by this computer virus called Glitch Trap after she wore the exact same mask in a VR game, and she would later go on to be Vanny with a Y, not an I, the sort of primary antagonist in the main game of Security Breach who didn't really end up doing anything. At the time, we assumed that this was some sort of does it does it bother? It always bothered me that the Vanny mask is different from her mask. The, the like, one that she wears, yeah. Yeah, the the fact <clears throat> that her mask and the Vanny like it's different. Uh, uh, yeah, well, because it, it has the tuft, and and I know, I've seen that come up a lot because when it's talking about the Vanny mask that we put on, it's like, oh, it's not the one that Vanessa leaves behind in the final thing because that's the mask she leaves behind. But yeah. it's like that's where I sit there and go, I think that's a gameplay thing yeah. more than anything. But yeah, it does bother me that you've been, literally, it's like you've advertised one thing about this character. Mm -hmm. It's all over. And, yeah. But but then you could say the same thing about like spring trap to scrap trap sure. and that sort of argument as well. It's the same thing where it's just like, whatever's best for the design for that game at that moment sometimes. Right. Well, and, and I think that, again, like I think that's the <clears throat> question in a lot of cases with this one is, yeah, like can you associate these being the same thing? Yeah. Even though they look very different, you know, is she actually wearing the mask that she built? You, yeah. I think everyone agrees that yes, it is the same thing, but it's it's a, you know, again, you have to define where your boundaries are and yeah. what you're willing to say is, oh, this is the same, this is not the same. Primary yeah. antagonist in the main game of Security Breach who didn't really end up doing anything. At the time, we assumed that this was some sort of digital consciousness recreation of William Afton who was trying to return to the real world. Yes. Because let's be honest, that's probably what it was supposed to be at the time. But it seems like they are retconning that game to imply that Glitch Trap wasn't William Afton, but the mimic replicating him. Yes. So Yeah, that is accurate. Yes. I think that that is true. We all agree yeah. on this. Good. Yeah, I think it's okay. gotta be, right? Good. Yeah, it's no. gotta be. Right, right? I, I feel like it kinda, yeah, it, it, it pretty much demands that, yes. If this white rabbit mask was the thing that allowed the mimic to infect the mind of Vanessa, then perhaps the same thing could be happening to Cassie. The more you wear the mask, mm -hmm. the more the mimic can integrate you into its neural network yes. until eventually it fully takes over. I would agree. That mm. might be what's happening in that bizarre secret ending. In a moment of panic and mental weakness, Cassie puts on the Vanny mask one last time, allowing the mimic to fully take control. Which I think is why you see Everyone here, you know, and, and, and we talked about this in our playthrough, but I think that's why you see everyone here, right? Like, Helpy is indicative of the mimic. Yeah. Like, Helpy is just, I'm the evil entity. You have Vanessa, who was, like, the first victim of mm -hmm. it, and Gregory is not able to rescue her. Yeah. So Gregory, you know, so, so she's in the system at this point. Yeah. And then Gregory... Gregory's the, the problem child. <laughs> Gregory's, all, Gregory's always the problem child. Yeah. You know, if this is an ending that he pursued where he does not see, again this feels like a different ending right but like yeah this is gregory also being a, a part of the system at some point somehow yeah yeah <laughs> gregory is always the, the the spanner in the works this, he is such a spanner 
Gregory is such a spanner. Gregory is such a spanner. In the works that is the FNAF law. In, in all the works, right? <laughs> it has caused us so many problems. So many problems. What a, what a so, good, so much hate. So a, much rage. <laughs> what a good kid. Also wearing purple. Just saying. He's wearing purple. So is Vanessa and Helpy is just purple anyway. <laughs> you know. Just saying. Was eating ice cream that heavily associated him with the Afton family. People hate that theory. Just say it. They keep doing it. And it's not my problem that they keep not don't hashtag don't blame me when it, they the franchise and keeps I, throwing him in colors that symbolically associate him with the main antagonist of this franchise mm -hmm. and release books that associate him with the main antagonist of this franchise. Yeah, I mean those balloons are the color of the happiest day balloons. Yes. So I, yeah, I, associates I, him with crying child I, I, and the Aftons yeah. and all of that. I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to add him. Uh, no, I, yes, I, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Fully integrate her into the neural network yeah. while showing her a peaceful image of Gregory, who we know the mimic has been impersonating, Helpy, who's also a construct of the mimic, mm -hmm. and Vanessa, who we know has already been infected. Yep. Come on in. Join us, they're saying the water's fine. Come on, join us, trust us. You don't have a choice, join yep. us. That could explain why the occipital transponders make you see all these fake barriers blocking your path. The mimic is forcing you to constantly put the mask back on yeah. in order mm -hmm. to progress. That's slow. That's cool, I like, I like calling it out that way. I think that's really interesting. Yeah. I do think you have to, you know, the idea that you can't, even if you knew that they're fake, the fact that your body can't like get through it, yeah. that, that's a little bit weird. And if you really needed to do that, you would have to have it be occipital and... Uh, I'm trying to think of like what other thing would trick your like sensory. It's, 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 yeah, because it's force, isn't it? It's touch. It, yeah, it's that force. To... But I like this idea. Like this, mm. again, game gonna game, but I like this concept of, oh yeah, it's yeah. forcing you to see this stuff because... It wants you to put on a mask. I think that's really smart. Yeah. Only integrating really cool. more and more really cool. into itself. That means that Mexis is not just trying to stop you from finding the nodes. It's trying to save your life. With that revelation, all of the pieces were starting to fall into place for me, but I still had one lingering question. When we find the mimic, it's behind a wall of concrete. And if the Mexis was designed... Interesting to note. Uh, concrete? Uh, again, if you read the books, there's this very fascinating couple of paragraphs, paragraphs dedicated to this in the epilogue, mm -hmm. discussing the difference between concrete and cement. Ment. Yes. <laughs> Just go, and it goes and goes. And it's the, these two girls, they're trying to run away from the mimic. The mimic's going to rip them apart. They're, they're scared for their lives. And to try and calm their nerves, they're trying to like move these big heavy pieces of concrete that have been blocking the doorways. Mm. And they go on this whole discussion about the differences between concrete and cement. And I just, I think it's really interesting because they call this out here as well. But, you know, it, I don't, it doesn't prove anything. It's not necessarily like any specific detail about like oh this is this proves that it's in the books yeah. so this is a, doesn't but, tie directly to anything yeah it's not but. directly one to one it's just one of those interesting moments where as a theorist you're like huh that's weird that they've called these two moments as parallels and this and that yeah yeah weird and to keep the mimic locked away well then someone must have first locked it away right but who well Towards the end of the game, you can find a little robot named Candy Cadet who will tell you a story oh of a mother Bigger and a child a who lived mm. in the woods with a dangerous monster. The mother managed to lock the monster in their basement to keep her family safe. Yep. However, in time, the monster learned to mimic the sound of the mother's voice, and one day, while the mother was out, the monster sang the child a lullaby in the voice of their mother, tricking the child into opening the door to the basement and letting the monster out. This is surprisingly direct for a FNAF game. I mean, this is barely a metaphor at this point. It's pretty much exactly what happens in the game. Cassie is the child, the mimic is the monster in the basement that tricks Cassie into letting it out, yep. and the mother is, well, we don't know. 
The most obvious answer might be Gregory if we take the story. Gre <laughs> Gregory! Can, can, can we do that thumbnail? Gregory is Mrs. Afton. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's is nice. Gregory They're is the Afton. same. That'd be great. Yeah, I gotta do the thumbnail with the rotation. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Gregory is the mother. Oh, uh, no. No, I, I, sorry. <laughs> Gosh, I love it. That's it's make it happen. There it is. There it is. That's a win. Gregory is everything and yet nothing right. all at once. He's, he's everything you need him to be in more. <laughs> what a, what a great boy. Story literally. The monster in the story mimicked the mother, and it was the mother who initially trapped it. Here, the mimic is copying Gregory, so that would mean that Gregory was the one who initially trapped it. Uh, however, the real Gregory no. also mentions the end that the mimic has been down there for a long time, and he genuinely sounds like he doesn't really know how it got there. I was gonna say, he says that he doesn't exactly know what it is, right? Yeah. He, he explicitly says, like, I'm not, I, I don't really know what, but we're fighting against it. And also, a long time. Yeah. he's a small child. I don't think he's down there pouring concrete over a door. My other idea was- You'd be surprised. I've got my five-year-old Ollie. He's building a fence with me right now. Doing right. a great job. Lo loves, loves using that <laughs> concrete. Uh, 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 cement. Cement. No, it's, it's, it's <laughs> Cassie's dad? Not only does it parallel the familial connection from the story, but Cassie also briefly mentions that her dad owns a faz wrench. A weird detail to include, considering her dad is never mentioned again. This could just be the game's way of explaining how Cassie knows what a faz wrench is, but it does mean that her dad at least worked at the pizza plex at some point, meaning he could have known about the mimic. Or who knows, maybe it was Zombie Mike or the puppet or one of the dozen other characters that this series keeps bringing back again and again. I don't really know. And to be honest, when it comes Wait, to- you said you solved everything. Hold up. Of no, hold no. up. You no. said you solved everything. Don't, don't be saying it. one thing no, no. solved it all. Come on. You said you solved it. Is that just the trope now? It yeah. is literally just how you intro every FNAF video. Everyone on the internet has to intro it with I've solved everything. No, sometimes <laughs> you say it changes everything. <laughs> It's not always solved. Sometimes it changes everything. Okay, oh, thank gosh. you very much. This game specifically, it doesn't really matter who trapped the mimic because it doesn't even work. The mimic still gets out. All right, I know this might've been a lot to take in. FNAF is literally incapable of having a straightforward plot. So allow me to recap what the actual story of this game seems to be. Okay. A long time ago, someone managed to trap a dangerous AI called the Mimic in the basement of the Pizza Plex. They created a... Who's... Uh, you can see whose face. This is someone... Yeah, I can, person's face. I can see... Yeah, that's... Uh, it's a handsome man. It's a very I'm, handsome man with a solid beard. Solid beard. Real, real good looking. He's got a, a little, of, little cravat. I, superhero? Uh, it's, it's a hoodie, type. I think. Oh, hoodie. A hoodie, I think. Um, right with is a he fist. Pointing? Is he pointing? It's got a fist. It's got like a fist. Oh, I thought, it was, I thought he was holding like a gun. Is he pointing? <laughs> no, it might, it might be. Oh, he is pointing. Yeah, you're right. Pointing. Yes. Slightly, yeah, like sli this. slightly bullish cut. Um, yeah, I see yeah. a cut. Uh -huh. That's the question I have. Who is this man? Brian, this image. <laughs> <laughs> Brian sliders. <laughs> sliders for days. Also, if, if your theory has solved everything, there better not be people with silhouettes and question marks. <laughs> I'm seeing questions, uh, so that implies that things have not been solved. Yeah. Just saying. The security <laughs> system called Nexus you did not consisted say of a bunch everything. of security nodes hidden within the very architecture of the pizza plex that would keep the mimic trapped. The Vanny mask is something built either by the mimic itself or someone working for it, maybe Vanessa while she was under its control, maybe someone else. This mask allows the wearer to see virtual augmented representations of the hidden nodes to help them locate and remotely deactivate them. It can also integrate the wearer's consciousness into the Mimic AI itself. Yep. Wear the mask long enough and it will eventually fully take over. Lastly, it implants occipital transponders into their brain, which can allow the Mimic to alter what they see via radio waves, even when they aren't wearing the mask. The Mimic does that imply, going back to the Gregory thing, does that mm. imply that Gregory is tricked into wearing the mask at some point? I mean. I mean, in an alternate version of this game, I guess, or in yeah, an alternate version I of mean, this. Yeah, I mean, because, yeah, like, well, no, because he's... Like, if you take that path, you're saying, like, this is the bad ending path, like... But he, because it would be him, 
the sense that he's wearing the mask and is able is seeing things that are not there. Mm -hmm. Do we see that? Do we see him seeing things that are not there? Like we obviously have like the the our connection to him in the illusion discs was the fact that his like you can he his you can hear the high pitched noise right, and we'll like really see and the fact that he could see Vanny but other people couldn't like and and that sort of, and the other animatronics couldn't yeah. and that sort of thing. So I guess you you could say that's why that audio is affecting his vision. Yeah, I suppose. No, I'd, but, I don't know. Uh, just the, the the Brazil ending where Gregory's yeah. just hanging out on the hill. But it, it he, makes me wonder if there is an alternate ending here mm. where it's connected to a bad end. Where everyone that's there is connected. Is connected, them. right? Like, obviously, there is, that would not be true to the lore of this game because no, Gregory sure. has escaped and he is, you know, they've trapped him in this. Like, there's the true ending where Vanessa is saved and they're free, right? Mm. But... I'm saying, is there a world where... Sure, where there's an alternate ending of Security Breach, which leads to the alternate ending of... Right, an Rin. alternate ending, which leads to this other alternate ending. Yeah. Which is weird and confusing. It's very... Yeah, it is. Because I suppose that would... that I mean, that would get make people happy, I suppose, because you could say that was the after ending, I suppose. where Because, again, he's on the hill, isn't he, at the end, in this golden sunlight, but the whole thing is collapsing around him. Right. And so there was the theory that... I think it was Right Host did a theory where Gregory never survived like that's yeah. a dream like which is very reminiscent of this where it's like this is fake yep him on the hill is like the idea like oh yeah he made it it's all happy but actually like the whole place crumbles around them how did they get out like there's no reason to believe they were able to get out and so unless and here's so, so there's two so there's two options yep i think that's the way i see the so the brazil ending right mm -hmm. there's either it is a spin-off of a spin-off yep, yep. basically it's it's not the canon ending but it's it's a non-canon ending to a non-canon route. Yes. You know, where Vanessa never escapes, but we know that she does. We know that the Princess Quest game yeah, is, is destroyed. Is beaten throughout and that's the thing. So throughout Ruin, it has to mm. so, Right. So no, so Ruin has a definitive route. You can't just we yeah. we can't sit here and say, oh, maybe the Brazil ending is You do is, this ending to that ending. Yeah, you can't say ending. bad ending to bad ending, good ending to good ending. Yeah. There is an ending that leads directly to the events of Ruin. So that's guaranteed. Yeah. Which tells you then, this is interesting. Actually, this this mm. might actually have meaning and this isn't just me spitballing. Like this actually is something, right? I've come to a conclusion here. <laughs> the fact that Vanessa is in there, mm. she's been wearing the mask the whole time. But she's free. We know that she's free. Yeah. But the Mimic has a store of her in there. Yeah, he is. Right, because she wore it for a while and so now Vanessa is now stored in the system. Well, just like the Mimic can do Cassie's voice. Correct. During the game, it's the same right. thing of like it has the 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 mimic ability to, and it's mimicked her right enough. But then why is Gregory there? Like Gregory's never seen wearing the mask. No. So how is Gregory? So if if Princess Quest is true, and we know that Ruin has to have happened after the Princess Quest ending, mm. how is the mimic mimicking Gregory this whole time? Unless. Gregory is the kid, and he's the robot child, <laughs> and is part of the AI and network. Part of the AI I mean, I mean, I say that facetiously, but I also say that not facetiously. I mean, because I... there is no if the Brazil ending is to be believed as just a possibility. Yeah. In a world that the Princess Quest ending has happened, Gregory at no point is shown wearing a mask. Yeah. Gregory at no point is jacked into a neural network. No. Nope. Gregory at no point is. You know, so unless it's just the mimic watching him and studying him. Yes. Which Which is eh. maybe. Or it's one of those things. So it's it's the mimic either watching him and studying him as like an entity around the pizza plex, which might be. Yeah. Or he's just been in the system the whole time. Well, I mean, which we alluded to a little bit in a theory, didn't we? Because it was that sense of the the wall code mm -hmm. and going that in the books right. is, uh, is like that is the language of the mimic yeah. that it develops right. and so the fact that it is you know duck run shoot right flash, all the th all the verbs crush the bar band, does, yeah. yeah and all the things that Gregory does which means if that's directed at him he can read that which means that he has to be some way connected to the mimic yeah. and the mimic's language right so that would Im Im add to that point of him being part of that network and the mimic in some way yeah. which... I know people are mad people hate me I love that Ash is just taking like social video over there is that what you're doing just taking I... social video 
I we mean, have, we have you, you weren't buddy. supposed to see. How could I not see? I, You're literally like, yo, duck face, what up? <laughs> James, what's happening right now? Well, you know, I thought I'd get my own version before it went viral on Twitter. I understand. <laughs> yeah, you can control that narrative, Ash. <laughs> This is what it be. So anyway, here, let's let's wrap this up. That's we have official socials, by the way. If if you're not following them, you should be following them. If you've made it this far, chances are you'll probably enjoy them. This is an hour long upload or whatever. If you've got this far, you're gonna enjoy them. Uh, at Team Theorist on X, Twitter, at Team Theorist. How dare you? And then we're also on Instagram too. So anyway, go follow us. Check it out. Find here. us Agree. everywhere. Helpy and the Vanny Mask to lure Cassie through the pizza plex. It places fake barriers in her path that she needs to use the Vanny Mask to get past. But the more she wears the mask, the more she loses herself to the neural network. That's fair. The Mexus tries its best to stop Cassie, scaring her into removing the mask without actually hurting her and activating jamming beacons to stop her from wearing it to begin with. But it's not enough. The Mimic tricks Cassie into deactivating all the security nodes and the Mexus, at which point it can finally Who break pulls him back in? Free. That's another interesting, it's just right, like- just being pulled, yeah, just pulled back in. What happens next? Well, I suppose that's up to you. It's the friends we made along the way. That What's is. next are the friends we made along the way. That was great. This was awesome. Chip tied. Well Fantastic. done. Fantastic. This was really good. And it got me to think, again, I love watching other people's theories because it gets mm. me to think about things and in, in maybe things that I've known, but maybe not articulated or things that I've, I assumed that I knew, but didn't really truly think through the, the implications, implications of it. So this was really solid. I think this was great. And I'm very excited to see all the other things. One of us will be reaching out to you to see if you want to work with us. <laughs> Because you have potential, sir. I like you. <laughs> Welcome to Team Theorist. Um, no, solid. Across the board, I think this is all interesting. I think there was really good points made in there. Um, and again, it just shows that at this point in the franchise, there aren't a lot of arbitrary decisions thrown in. Like, they mm. know that we're going to comb through it all. And yes, sometimes it's going to be contradictory or vague for the sake of generating content and audience and discussion. But... I think like stuff like this is, is helpful for wrapping your head around what the story's trying to tell. Any final thoughts from you, Tom? No. Great. <laughs> so with that, make sure that you follow us on those social media channels like I mentioned before so that you can see what Ash was filming. I don't know what Ash was filming. We'll find out, I'm sure. You will find out. Yeah, and then head on over to Team Theorist if you want to pick what episodes are coming up next. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you for letting us uh, react to you, Chip Tide. And as always, my friends, if you have solved the FNAF lore, let us know down in the comments below. Please. In the please. Meantime, please. <laughs> for Tom. For me. Do it for Tom. For my sanity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. And remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya!